Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It's so nice to have you all in the house. Um, and it's nice to have Charlie in the house. Yeah, very nice. And it's nice to have all of you out there with us this morning, or whenever you choose to join us, as they say. So the theme for this month is prove it. Live, laugh, love abundantly. Who doesn't want to do that, right? There's always more love, more life, more laughter. And it's more than just the theme. I think it's what we strive to do, to live abundantly in all aspects of our life, to love abundantly in all ways, not just for those people who think like we do, look like we do, but in all ways. And having abundant joy through our life, through all of our experiences. That's, for me, really the mission, right? Just to be more, to be more of all of it. So this month, we're going to look at two books. We're going to look at the Science in Mind textbook, um, which is more than a textbook. I think it's more of a life manual because... For me, every time I pick it up and I open up to a page, it's like, oh, I've never read that before. <laughs> I know it's all highlighted, but I've never really read it before, right? And then a delightful modern par a parable, and it's this little book called The Go-Giver. And it's actually um, a little story about a powerful business idea. But it's not, it is a little story, but it's just a powerful life idea. So this little book has five big laws of success that we're going to cover. But today, I'm going to sort of set the theme. And I want to start off with a quote from Ernest Holmes in the textbook. It's at the very end of the textbook. In conclusion, what the world needs is spiritual conviction, followed by spiritual experience. I would rather see a student of science prove its principles and to have him repeat, all, then, then to have him repeat all the words of wisdom that I've written. It is far easier to teach truth than to practice it. To hold one's thoughts steadfastly to the constructive, to that which endures, to the truth, may not be easy in a rapidly changing world, but to the one who makes an attempt, much is guaranteed. So, yes, taking classes is great. Showing up here on Sundays is great. But if we, if we don't take this out into the world, if we don't prove it to ourselves over and over and over again, if we don't do that, then we've kind of been wasting our time, I think. So, in the famous words of Yoda, this isn't about trying. <laughs> there is no try. There is only do. <laughs> and that is what Reverend Joanne and I hope is something that we all can embrace this month, the idea of proving. Um, this isn't sticking up, but staying up, but there. There we go. The idea of proving it over and over and over again. And... Proving it in a way that is just about living it. I'll be about come, becoming aware of where we can be more loving, where we can bring more joy, where we can expand the energy of life. And the one founda foundational principle this month is all about becoming a giver to life just a giver to life. And that's kind of what this book is about, right? It's not about getting anything. We don't need to get anything. We've got all that we need. Now, it may not appear that we've got all of the love or all of the toys or all of the whatever, right? But in reality, right here and right now, we have everything we need. Everything. And as we embrace that idea, then it's not about getting. It's truly about giving. 
And the interesting thing about giving is that the more you give, the more you get. It's fascinating, but it's true. It's a principle. It's a law. It's a, I don't know what to do with this, but there, maybe that. I don't know. Anyway, thank you, sir. Jack of all trades, a Charlie of all trades. There we go. So it's about giving from the heart. And no, this is not a tithing talk, so you know, don't get all nervous here. This is a talk about truly giving. And giving, if you think about it, is the core of all spiritual traditions. It's at the core of everything. It's at the core of life. But it's not so much about the act of giving. It's about the energy that is involved in giving. Because everything we do has a frequency to it. And when we give from the heart, that frequency is just off the charts. It's that divine flow that we, when we give from a place of love, of knowing that there is enough, that we are enough, and we give from that place, we just take our vibration and we just elevate it along with whoever we're giving to. And that's why it's this divine flow. I love the idea that giving from the heart is not a transactional thing. It's a transformational thing. And that's how you know you're giving from the heart, because you have no expectations. And you delight. You delight not only in the act of giving, but seeing the smile seeing the love, seeing the growth, seeing the change, no matter how little there is. It's like, if you imagine a river flowing, when that river flows, it, prov it provides life and nourishment to all that it touches. And the divine flow of this river is why all of that life exists while it's how it loves. And we are like that. When we give, we are in that river. And I can tell you that when you're in that river, you can't give enough. Truly, you just can't give enough because it is so nurturing and rewarding. But giving requires trust. Trust in the universe, trust in oneself, trust in the law. But most importantly, trust in humankind. It requires trust. And trust is one of those things that's kind of hard for some of us, right? Because it's so much easier not to trust. <laughs> it's so much easier to allow fear and worry to show up instead of love and joy and laughter. And, and it's so much easier to judge someone than to openly embrace them. It's just easier not to trust life. But once we start to trust life, once we start to trust ourselves, we have to trust ourselves first, right? Because once we trust ourselves, then we allow intuition space, we allow intuition to grow louder and louder, and that small voice is no longer small. small. It becomes a regular conversation in one's head. And once we start to trust ourselves and that starts to happen, it becomes easier to trust the universe, easier to trust others. Easier just to trust that God's got our back. Because that is, that is a fundamental truth. It's just a fundamental truth. And when I talk about giving, I'm talking about giving in terms of all forms of energy. Our time, our talent, it's not just about the money. It really isn't. The money sweetens the deal, I'm not going to lie. But it's so much more than that. 
there's a passage in Acts where Peter and John, they're walking past a man begging at the gates of the temple. And the scripture reads like this. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, silver or gold I do not have, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ, walk. And then taking the man by the right hand, Peter helped him up. And instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He stood up and he walked. And he entered the temple praising God. It's all about, it's all about being, you know, trusting. It's all about giving what you've got. In that instance, what Peter gave was a statement of truth. And the beggar was willing to accept it for exactly what it was, a statement of truth. And so he took that truth. And stood up because he trusted that statement of truth. Who else would say that, right? Other than someone who could deliver on the goods, so to speak, right? So giving of one ta- one's time, talent, and treasures, it's kind of a combined deal. I often say that the two greatest things that I got out of this teaching was the practice of meditation and the practice of tithing. But when I started writing this talk, I realized the third aspect was just giving. Just giving. Without having to be asked. You know, just to be willing to be the person making the coffee or sweeping the floor, or whatever needed to happen, just to be that person. Just when, I'll I'll never forget, I was renting a car on Long Island, and there was just total chaos going on everywhere. I mean, flights had been delayed, and they didn't have enough cars, and this poor guy was just, you know, imagine sitting behind a desk, behind a computer, and there's like a line of like 20 very, irritated flyers waiting for their car, right? I mean, they're already two and a half hours late, right? And all we want to do is go to bed. So everybody's just yelling at this guy. And he's typing away on his computer, and it's my turn. And I noticed he had this most incredible watch. And I said, that watch is so unique. And it turned out it was his grandfather's watch that that had been given to him. And, And it just... He just took a breath and told me a little story. And all of a sudden, things just started going a little better, right? I mean, because sometimes that's what you just need to do. You just need permission to take a beat. And when we do something that simple, and we notice the change of the energy around us, oh, it's so sweet. So meditation, yes. Tithing, yes. But knowing how valuable the little things that I can give are. And you don't even think about them. But when you start to pay attention to them, you realize, man, we are powerful people. And we have a huge influence. And again, it's all about energy. So giving of time. That's something that people think doesn't have a lot of value. But time, think about how precious time is. I have a birthday coming up. I've been thinking a lot about how precious time is. But it's very precious. So when we give of our time, it's truly a gift. And we tend to give it freely. And I would like to propose that we give of our time intentionally and lovingly, expecting nothing. But we give from that place of love. And if, and if something or someone is requiring your time outside of house cleaning, re- requiring your time, think about, is this time, is this how I want to spend my time? Is this how I want to give of my time? And if the answer is yes, great. 
But if the answer is no, could there be something more loving, more life affirming that you could be doing with that time? Because time, time is as precious as our treasures. Just like our talents, our talents are really, truly precious. But how often do we just do something, right? I have a, a stepdaughter and she's really good at filling out documentation. And so people are always asking her, can you help me with this and can you help me with that? And she does it without even really thinking about doing it because it's one of her natural talents. But she doesn't do it, she does it naturally, yes, but she doesn't always do it lovingly, you know? So why take your precious time and your great talent and do it when you can't really be loving in the process? Because you're robbing yourself in the world of an energy, of a vibration that is just attracting your good. Each of us, each of us has things to give. But when we give all three intentionally, and lovingly, we just create this wonderful flow, this wonderful circle of life. And once we create that circle, we need to trust it. That's all, we need to trust it. We need to stop looking for the demonstration we're trying to prove and start feeling it. That's what this month is about. It's about feeling more life and more love and more joy and experiencing more laughter. We don't need to tie it to a thing. Let's just prove that we can create a flow. So there's one more spiritual law, and that is truly the more you give, the more you get. Just it's really, truly that simple. But the more you give without expecting to get, this is the key, <laughs> the more you give from your heart intentionally without expecting anything, then really crazy, wonderful things start to happen. And you become amazed at how great your life is. You just do. And any of us who have consciously given of our time and our talent and our treasure lovingly can, can just say, yeah, come on board, because it's a wonderful way to live a life. So if you want more love, be more loving. If you want more friends, become more friendly. If you want a bigger bank account, be more, be more generous in your giving of your treasure. If you want your talents to expand, take the talents that you've got and put them to work. Practice, so to say, with those talents. And don't wait till the perfect time. Because, guys, there is no perfect time. The calendar will never be totally open, right? It, there's, there's no perfect time. But right here and right now is the perfect time to set that intention to joyfully give without expectation from the heart and be so grateful that you trust yourself enough to do it. It starts and it ends with us. Because when we give from that heart, we start to become channels. We become channels of love. We become channels of abundant everything. And I can tell you that people around you start to give more. Even those friends who aren't very giving kind of sort of suit up and show up because they want to be in the flow that you're in. They want what you've got. So they hang out more with you. And and then all of a sudden, we're, it's like we're in the sacred dance with life. You know? That sacred dance of giving and receiving and loving and being grateful. 
it's, it's just this incredible dance. So my ask of us for this month is to, get, is to commit to give more freely of our time, our talent, and our treasures, and do it lovingly, intentionally, and with the knowing that this is the right way to spend that time, right way to spend that talent, and the right way to spend that treasure. Because you're spiritually fed. You're spiritually motivated. You're spiritually excited. Those are the reasons to do it. It is about being in the flow. That's all we want us to, that's all we want, Joanne, Reverend Joanne and I want to prove this month, is that we can all be in that flow and we can support each other in this community, both online and in person. We can support each other being in that flow. John Bunyan said, you have not lived today until you have done something for someone who could never repay you. How is that for the essence of giving? The meaning of life is, it, the meaning of life is hard. Find your gift. The purpose of life is to give that gift away. Picasso. Winston Churchill. We make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. So, that's sort of the mission this whole month. Um, do you guys remember the movie Pay It Forward? Yeah. It, it's a, it's a, or the book or whatever. It was a long time ago, right? You buy the coffee for the car behind you, you do something, and then having that person pay it forward, right? do three more good acts. That one person pays it forward to three more people. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing to do. Holmes wrote, life is an internal givingness, the offering of the cosmic self to the joy of its own fulfillment. You are, I am part of this joy. And we find fulfillment only as this joy passes through us offering to others. Everything moves in circles. We short circuit our good when we refuse to pass it on. So, who's with me in living in the flow this month and proving, just proving, right, our spiritual principles? Let's go and do that, okay? All right. Namaste. <laughs>